Today, I'm taking you on a beautiful journey to the island of Cocos, located off the coast of Costa Rica. It's known for its crystal waters and diverse marine life. The island is a true paradise for scuba divers and nature enthusiasts. From swimming with hammerhead sharks to exploring the lush jungle of trails, there is something for everyone to enjoy on this stunning island. So pack your bags, grab your camera, and let's go for an adventure of a lifetime on Cocos Island. I'm waiting at the Hotel Holiday Inn uh, in Escazú. We arrived on time. I'm about to, um, to hop on the, um, the shuttle to go to Punta Arenas. The shuttle should be arriving in about 10 minutes. My mission is to share with you what I've seen and encourage you to travel and discover parts of the world in order to enrich your life experiences, get out of your comfort zone, and open your mind. We have rough waters. Here I am in my uh, in my room, and uh, definitely just had a little bit of seasickness. So, part of the experience, uh, and uh, hopefully it won't happen again. But um, we're all good. So, looking forward to uh, good dives tomorrow, and uh, try to show you some footage. All right. After 36 hours on the open ocean, and after having fed the fish. <laughs> We finally arrived to the primal Jurassic Park-esque scenery of Cocos Island, located 500 kilometers from the coast of the Costa Rican mainland. The vegetation here is dense, lush, and exactly what you might imagine a prehistoric world would have been like. It's classified as a moist tropical forest where there are 235 known species of plants, 30% of which are endemic. It's a rugged landscape, rising more than 2,000 feet into the air. It's almost insurmountable fortress of forest and vertical cliffs. Of course, you have to make it through the sharks, the open ocean surge, trying to pulverize your flesh and bones against the old volcanic rocks.
On our island visit, environmentally conscious island rangers built an earthquake-proof suspension bridge made entirely from confiscated buoys and fishing lines. So after a couple of morning dives in the strong current and the surge of the Pacific Ocean, a nice, cool, calm, freshwater pool is actually very invigorating. The smell of the jungle's rich foliage and musty earthiness mingles with the cool mist created by the falling water. Cocos Island has over 200 waterfalls created by volcanic and tectonic processes. The waterfall we visited today here at Wafer Bay is a few hundred meters high. Here's looking down the waterfall's path to the rocky beach. My inspiration to take this trip and to make this video came from fellow Canadian Rob Stewart, maker of the documentary called Sharkwater, who sadly passed away in 2017 in a scuba diving accident. Getting back to the subject of Rob Stewart, we saw a lot of sharks on our trip, a few of them, one or two easily, that uh, had fishing lines hanging out of their mouth. And um, listen, there was a lot of illegal fishing in the area in the times, and it's very unfortunate to see this. And I think this is the, the message that Rob Stewart uh, was wanted to convey to everybody out there with his movie Shark Water is that sometimes we can be cruel to animals and we need to do our best to protect them because they're extremely important for our ecosystem and uh, really hope that this message gets through and uh, that we take care of sharks the best that we can. While we were there, we went to eight different dive sites, one of which, Alcyon, 
was one of the favorites of Jacques Cousteau, particularly because schooling hammerhead sharks can often be seen there. Alcyon is a deep, 30-meter dive visiting the peak of an underwater mountain. Mr. Cousteau was a world-famous oceanographer and filmmaker that explored Cocos Island dive sites. These hammerhead sharks migrate from Galapagos Island to Cocos Island on their way to the eastern Pacific coastline, where females give birth to their young. The Charles Darwin Foundation has been conducting studies of the migration of this species through GPS tags tracked by the NASA satellites since 2013. The Sharks Project studies their populations with their movement patterns to understand their migratory routes and evaluate the effectiveness of the marine reserve in protecting various shark species. Based on the data collected, scientists can also uncover local distribution patterns and levels of connectivity among the populations at a regional level. Additionally, scientists use this information as a reference point to study the effects of climate change on the species. This was a really wonderful moment. A uh, giant oceanic manta came to meet us during our very last dive of the trip. It was kind of like some sort of gift goodbye. Having the last rain of any fish, actually mantas have great vision and believed to be self-aware as they have passed the mirror self-recognition test. If you watch my previous video, you'll see uh, they show a lot of curiosity and enjoy interacting with divers. Hope you enjoyed watching the footage today. Um, as one man once quoted while navigating the Pacific Ocean, when beholding the tranquil beauty and brilliancy of the ocean's skin, one forgets the tiger heart that pants beneath it and would not willingly remember that the velvet paw but conceals it a remorseless fang. I wanted to take this very special moment to thank everyone who contributed to the footage uh, for this video, including Mark Morrow, Dive Mate, aka Bengal Boy, for the professional photos and aerial footage from the drones. And another special thanks to fellow dive instructor and vlogger Simon Vreur for contributing as well to all the, the footage here in this video. Mark and Simon actually contributed a lot of this footage that you've seen here today. So if you're interested in seeing more of their material, be sure to click their social media links below.